Welcome to this Spotlight on COVID interview with De Baroness Deborah Bull. Deborah is Vice President and Vice Principal for London at King's and she's the University's Senior Advisory Fellow for Culture. She's also a crossbench peer in the House of Lords. Uh, Deborah has had a really long career in the arts, first as a professional dancer, then as a creative leader and cultural commentator. She's a member of the London Transition Board, which coordinates the capital's transition from lockdown to recovery from COVID-19. And she chairs that board's uh, arts and cultural strategy group. So thank you, Deborah, for joining us today. Um, the COVID pandemic in the UK has really turned the cultural industry on its head. So many venues have been uh, affected by having to close their doors because of the ban on mass gatherings. Um, and London is such a hub for the arts, as we know. How is COVID-19 affecting uh, the cultural sector in London and the visitors that the city attracts? I mean, it's a, it's a really important question. I think it's important to say this is very much a national problem. So while we're specifically talking about uh, London today, I, I, I mean, we need to recognise that there are, there are huge impacts um, on the cultural sector all across all across the UK. But I mean, thinking about London, it really is one of the world's greatest creative cities. It is home to so many galleries, theatres, cinemas, festivals. Uh, it has, I think, 10 major concert halls. It has uh, museums, live me music venues, and there are the libraries. And then the informal spaces where culture happen, um, you know, such as pubs um, and, and local venues. So it really is, um, you know, a vast, hub. And I think it's important to say that beyond what we th might think of as London's cultural scene, you know, the glittering lights of the West End, uh, the boroughs across London are home to some real cultural gems, a lot of uh, local infrastructure that's highly valued by the, by the communities and community-based organisations that make a significant difference to the lives of the people who live there. And then finally, to say this is all powered by a vast creative workforce, 50% of which is freelance. Um, so before COVID, the sector was absolutely thriving. It was generating almost 60 billion a year, which is half the UK output. Um, and one in every six jobs in London was in the creative sector. But as you hinted, lockdown had a massive impact on the sector. And it is predicted that the cultural sector will be hit twice as hard as the wider economy. And I guess put simply, that is because of the continued restriction on mass gatherings. If people can't gather at cultural events, there's no ticket income. Without ticket income, the long established business models just don't add up anymore. And so the knock on uh, is not only on the workforce in those venues, but it's on the freelance sector, many of whom lost 100% of their income overnight in March when lockdown happened. And, and a lot of them have fallen between those income support schemes that the government have put in place. Um, so they haven't been able to be furloughed, nor are they eligible because of their portfolio careers for the self-employed um, income support scheme that came alongside it. I think also uh, the impact of local authorities. So they are a significant commissioner of cultural services, and yet their budgets are hugely under press pressure because of um, COVID-related necessities. So how are they going to maintain the support that they've put in place? Um, I mean, we have to say the government's financial uh, package, the 1.57 billion, hugely welcome but it is explicitly targeted at organisations and venues and it's not going to protect jobs. And we've seen already the redundancies coming from some of London's really big cultural players like the, the National Theatre or the South Bank Centre. I mean, just one thing, one more thing to say, um, like so much of the pandemic, we're seeing a disproportionate effect here on um, black and minority ethnic communities and on disabled communities. And this is absolutely true in the cultural sector. So it risks worsening what is already a really deep seated problem of, of inequalities in the cultural workforce and in who gets to engage with and take part in, um, in London's cultural activities. And how do you think the cultural sector and the creative industries are responding to some of those challenges that you've just highlighted there? Yeah, I mean, I so it's been actually humbling to see how the sector has come together. I mean, first and foremost, the response has been hugely creative and it would be, wouldn't it, because this is a 
creative sector, but it's also been highly collaborative. So um, a number of groups have self-organized, which bring together a vast range of different voices from across uh, the established organizations, the smaller scale organizations, um, the freelance community, disabled artists, um, all sorts of sector facing bodies have come together to start to think about future facing solutions, to start to think about how recovery from the pandemic can be a catalyst for addressing some of those uh, problems. You know, you you tend to talk in, in strategy um, uh, phrases about needing a burning platform in, a, in, a, in order to really drive change. Well, you know, here is a burning platform and the sector is being incredibly creative about thinking together about what the future might look like. I think in you know practical practical answer to your question, we've all seen the uh, the wealth of creative product, the ways in which organisations have um, um, been able to put content online, share content online, um, the the way that 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 has become you know a very a much more normal thing. I mean, we knew that those opportunities are out there, but people have really taken advantage of it. I think people have needed. Um, that creative opportunity and outlet, um, dur especially during during lockdown. But I would also point to the really um, imaginative, innovative, uh, um, responsive uh, reactions of some uh, uh, arts organisations, which are very much rooted in their communities. So something like the Albany and Deptford, which is absolutely pivoted in order to address the immediate needs of their local communities. So there are examples where they are supporting local authorities in responding to COVID challenges, um, in supporting, um, you know, a, a catch up education for young people, um, helping to combat loneliness. Um, and I think it's, you know, it's, a, it's a, another indication of the ways in which uh, London's cultural community is a part of and serves the communities around it. And what do you think, having gone through this experience of the pandemic, what do you think the future holds for the cultural sector as some venues begin to reopen now? Well, I think let's um, let's start by thinking positively. We know that culture and the creative industries are uh, fast growing. They have been a fast growing sector for about a decade now. They have the potential to offer a route out of recession. We sh we saw that post 2008 and the financial crash. We know that in 2018, the creative industries as a whole grew at five times the rate of the UK economy, and they were adding jobs at three times the national average. And these jobs are future proof because they are highly resistant to automation. So, so that there. There is a lot that we have to bear in mind about the potential of the creative industries uh, more broadly within our, um, not just within our cultural life, but within our economic life and indeed within our social life. I mean, the one thing we haven't talked about yet is the impact of arts and culture um, on physical and mental health, on educational attainment, on bringing communities together. You know, these, these things are well evidenced impacts of arts and culture. And what we're seeing in the pandemic is these, um, these things are, are coming to the fore. So I think I have the privilege to work with people from across London's broad and diverse art sector in my role on the London Transition Board. And what I've found there is really impressive collegiate thinking and a determination to ensure that where possible, we find opportunities in this crisis to address some of the systemic and persistent inequalities that see access to arts and culture too dependent on where you're born to whom you're born and where you go to school. Um, and this is something I'm also uh, hell, uh, looking to support and address through the all party parliamentary group on creative diversity, which I co-chair chair with Chi Onwura. Um, so I do think the cultural sector is determined that now must be a time to promote a more equitable distribution of resources to embed equality and diversity principles into every conversation and in every decision going forward. Um, I think arts and culture will have a huge potential to support educational catch up. I mean, what the research is showing is young people have not only missed out on on the uh, intellectual stimulation of education, but on the social stimulation, um, on the on the learning to be together. And we know that, um, that arts and culture can play a role there. Mental health is going to be a really big challenge going forward. We're already seeing this again, arts and culture 
um, can really contribute effectively um, to efforts to combat some of those challenges. And this is something we're exploring at King's through our arts and health, arts, health and wellbeing hub and through some of the research that we're doing. So I think, you know, overall, it's it is a hugely challenging moment for the sector. Um, and it won't be easy because until there's a vaccine, it is really hard to see how venues are going to reopen fully and the impact on the business model and the knock on impact on the workforce, on diversity is massive. Um, but this is a highly resilient sector. And I would say, you know, one one thing, perhaps just a, a thought to finish with, you know, we have needed art from the beginning of time to express who we are, to communicate um, and to to lay down, um, you know, to, to set out our values, to explore what we believe. Um, art will survive. What we need to be really cognizant of here are the people who make art, the people who participate in art, um, because that's where the real vulnerability lies. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Deborah. That's, that's been a really interesting conversation. Thank you for your time today. It's a pleasure.